I recently made a video called Why Invest in Watches and after endorsing why I feel it's a good idea to invest in watches and why I think they make for great appreciating assets, I thought it would make sense for me to share my thoughts on how to invest in watches, the do's and the don'ts. Investing in watches and making money is quite a simple process in theory because it simply involves buying something for a price, say £10,000, and then selling that item somewhere in the future for considerably more than what you paid for it, say £20,000, making £10,000 in profit. But what's important is having a certain degree of confidence that the item that you've bought is interesting, desirable, collectible enough to someone in the future uh, so they'll have the desire to buy it for the money that you're hoping to achieve for it. Easy, right? But very few things in life are absolutely certain. So how do you get enough savvy and education to put the odds in your favour of a successful outcome? I'll tell you. Next up, look for watches that are in high demand. When looking for a watch that will retain its value over time, it's important to look at the past and evaluate brand models that have continued to perform throughout generations. Everyone knows the safer bet brands like Patek Philippe and Rolex and AP, but honestly, there are watches from these brands that aren't good investments and they wouldn't offer profit certainty and price appreciation. Whilst the brand is an in-demand brand, not all the watches they release are. And likewise, if you research well, you can make money on certain models from just about every prestigious watch brand out there. Honestly, I've made profit on so many different watch brands, and it comes down to choosing the right watch bought at the right price. But one thing's for sure is that you'll find it hard to make money buying and selling watches that not many people are interested in and that the watch is not in demand. Next up, purchase from trusted and secure sources when buying pre-owned. When looking for a watch to invest in, you shouldn't just limit yourself to new models. A certified pre-owned or vintage watch can make just as good an investment, if not better, than a new watch sometimes. But the vintage marketplace can be filled with landmines. Often you'll find franking watches, meaning that they have parts exchanged, often unbeknownst to the next owner or the person that's buying the watch. Of course, once no longer in its original state, the watch can lose a lot of its value, and that's why you need to be careful and buy from a trusted source. Don't invest in watches if you're not passionate about them. I mentioned this at the start and I'd like to repeat it now just to reinforce it. This should be a passion investment project. Hopefully you noted my point about diversification in my why invest in watches video so that you hopefully know about investment diversification and hopefully you will have other investments in your portfolio and watches are one of a few which means it can and should be a passion investment. Whilst I've bought shares in companies that I'm not that interested in apart from attempting to profit out of them, but if you don't love watches and you do want to make money out of them, it won't be fun and it won't be enjoyable and it will feel like work. Ideally, I want this to be a fun project for you. Next up, get a guide, someone that can expertly share knowledge and advice and wisdom based on their experience. If you insist in investing in watches and you're not at all interested in them, it will purely just be a transactional process and it's better that you're guided by an expert, a professional in the industry. Next, beware of watch trading fads and bubbles. Be careful buying massively overinflated pieces from scalpers who are reacting to a market change. Like stocks, ideally you want to buy undervalued stocks that are at the bottom of the pricing curve and then sell at the top of the curve before it goes back down again. So now at the top of the curve, we're seeing Rolex Daytonas, Patek Philippe Nautilus and all new Rolex OPs with coloured dials. Once upon a time it was Jacobs & Co and Harry Winston and Frank Muller, but not anymore. So be cautious about buying watches that are at the inflated end of a bubble because it may burst. Next, make sure you look after your investment watches. Like cars, watches don't like to be sat idle for too long. They need to run and keep the oils running through and lubricating all the important parts. So wind your watches occasionally. And if you're going to wear them, take care of them. No rock climbing. If you really want to protect your asset, get two. One to rock and one to stock. One that gets put away and one that you can wear with care. Make sure you store your investment watches wisely. Where will you keep it? In a home safe or hidden away at home in a bank vault maybe, or a safety deposit box, someone else's safety deposit box, or maybe a work safe. Think about the risks of each and every option and ask yourself, is there a better, safer, more secure way that I can store my watch 
to reduce the risk of theft and damage. I'm about to make a video on how to secure your watches safely at home, so subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so you don't miss it. Next up is how much to spend on your investment project. Hopefully you've listened when I said to diversify your alternative investment portfolio and also not to spend more than you can comfortably afford. I would say that your watch portfolio should maybe account for 25% of your investment spend. Never spend bill money, that is money that you should spend to pay your household bills because all of your investments carry risk and you don't want to miss an important life bill. Use money that you've set aside and make sure you buy watches that are in your investment price range. Next, you must know the pros and cons of buying new versus buying pre-owned watches. Both have their advantages and their disadvantages and it depends on the brand and the watch and the availability. When investing in pre-owned watches, you could potentially make a higher return quicker. Once worn, the prices of a new watch fall dramatically, apart from a few models from a few brands. So if you buy a watch at a good price and then invest in its restoration, you can also stand to make a good profit. Buying pre-owned is sometimes wise because when you buy pre-owned, you sell pre-owned. When you buy an investment watch as new, you can't enjoy the watch and wear it. So unless you lock it away in a safe and don't rock it, if you buy new and you wear it, you'll be selling pre-owned. When you buy pre-owned, you take the upfront hit out of the watch straight away. And only a very small handful of very special watches from certain brands do not experience this hit. Next up, attempt to reduce your risk. Just like diversifying your investment portfolio, it's wise to have a portfolio of a few different watches from a few different brands. Like we saw with Jacob & Co and Frank Muller, interest can suddenly vanish, leaving watches that were once bought for tens of thousands of pounds being sold for just a few thousands of pounds. Next, deep research the watch you're interested in. Don't just buy the first one you see on any website, you'll need to do your due diligence. Use several reputable online watch sites to get a fair price comparison that will help you determine the actual value of the watch. Use Chrono24 to see the price that watches are being advertised for, but be mindful that just because this is what they're being listed for, it doesn't mean that this is what they're actually selling for or what people will actually be prepared to pay for them. But it is a good starting point to get an idea of the current market value of a certain watch. Look for watches that are like for like, the country, the contents, the condition, the year, and the less watches available on the platform, the better. If the platform is flooded with a certain type of a watch, that isn't so good. And this is the number one reason that most investors fail at making a profit on luxury watches because they're not doing the research. You're watching this video and that's a good sign that you're interested in investing in watches and you're doing the right things doing some research. Next up, investing quality over quantity. Unless you like being a busy fool, consider buying a few great watches rather than buying lots of lesser quality substandard watches. The lesser quality watches will not increase in value as fast or as much as a top grade luxury prestige watch. And then of course there'll be more work in acquiring them and selling them and more to store and more to wind and more to manage. So it's a much harder process. Next up, consider buying watches from other countries. Once upon a time here in the UK, I could freely buy watches from all around Europe without having to worry about the additional 20% VAT payment that I need to make as part of the import taxes when I'm importing goods from outside of the UK. Being based in England and since Brexit, this is now a very real thing. And not only that, it has made the watches here in the UK more expensive because there's now less supply of watches on the island making the ones that are traded here sell at a premium or so it seems and that's thanks to good old supply and demand so what does this mean for buying investment watches well most of the time we're tempted to only buy from the country that we're in in my case uk to uk otherwise if you're buying from overseas you have to begrudgingly pay the import taxes however do pay attention to watches that are overseas because often there are some great deals to be had even paying the 20 percent or whatever your local import tax is to bring them into your country they can still be cheaper than buying that same watch from a local seller in your country for example japan and the us have got some very well priced watches at the moment just saying but take care and get in touch with me if you want some one-on-one -on -one tips about buying watches safely from outside of your country and importing watches. Next up, love limited edition watches and be on the lookout for them. While some brands are mocked within the watch community for always doing limited editions and because their limited edition runs are barely limited because the runs are so high, do keep a lookout for genuinely cool limited 
models from cool watchmakers. A lot of the time they're sold before they're even launched into the market. Often they coincide with the premiere of big sporting events or big movies or cool stores or cool partner brands like cars, for example. And also watches that have a great backstory can become solid collector's items. Just look at what Omega did with the Moon Watch and what Tag Heuer did with uh, the Steve McQueen Monaco. Limited creates scarcity. Scarcity creates demand for the right watches from the right brands. Next up, if you want to play a bit safer, don't start with obscure brands. If you want to lower your risk and have money to spend and don't want to invest the time to research and educate yourself, my tip here is to remember five from five, and that is buy the top five luxury watch models from the top five watch brands. I think you probably know who they are. Rolex, Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, Vacheron Constantin, and Amiga. And get in touch with me if you want to know what I believe the top five watch models are from each of these top brands. Next up, when you can't get the model that you want because of high demand in the marketplace, because it's a hot model, look for similar alternatives. When a hot watch is trending and it's become unobtainable, consider buying the models Big Brother or Little Brother or Older Brother or Younger Brother or a stable mate. Because if it's unobtainable for you, it'll be the same for hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of other buyers too. And often people now and in the future will be happy with the next best thing if they can't get the original thing that they want. And that might be an older model or a version that's a few millimeters bigger or smaller. Maybe it's got a different movement, but it's likely the demand will rise in the slipstream of that hot model. Next up, develop contacts in the industry and get the help of experts. Get to know people in the industry that are avid collectors, buyers, sellers and enthusiasts. There are some cool watch events out there too where you can meet like-minded people. Here in the UK we've got Red Bar, uh, we've got Time for a Pint and there are others. Plus there are WhatsApp groups and forums and Facebook groups to join and make friends in. Doing this will help you get to know other collectors and sellers so that you'll have an easier time when it comes to selling your investment watch because your pool of potential buyers is bigger. And this goes a long way with developing contacts in the field because it never hurts to have help. Finally, my last tip is to have patience when buying and selling. Investing in watches is not an overnight success story. It can take time to learn and research and hunt and seek and buy. Take your time and enjoy the process. Don't rush, relax, be cool. Make sure you go steady in your process. It can take a while to find a good seller of the watch you want or a buyer for the investment watch you're trying to sell. And now here's a little bonus tip for you. Consider alternative ways to invest in watches. If you're not sure where to start and you don't have the budget for an entry level collector's timepiece that might set you back five or 10 or, 100 or 200,000 pounds. And if you don't want the grief of researching and buying and selling and storing and maintaining, winding and insuring the watches, something else to consider is buying shares in watch related companies. Watches of Switzerland, Swatch Group, Richemont, Caring, Movado. These are just a few, and you could also consider fractional ownership. And here I recommend you check out a company called Koya, which is a relatively new company that breaks collectibles down into digital fractions, allowing anyone to invest in a cool selection of in-demand assets. So that's it, thank you so much for watching to the end. Please do like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos on buying and selling watches, staying safe in the process, making money, saving money and other thought-provoking content. If you have any tips that you'd like to add, please let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. And if you want to know more about Prestige Watches, my company, and want to start looking for investment watches, please do get in touch. Check out my website, download the free guide that's there. Cheers and see you on the next one.